It's a gear tester here, and in this video, I want to highlight the Benchmade 112 H2O fixed blade knife. This is a great tool, one that would be excellent to have along on a kayaking trip or a rafting adventure or going scuba diving or even taking it snorkeling. I think it is a great blade. It's particularly great because it is made of a stainless steel that has nitrogen introduced to the metal, which makes it even more resistant to salt water or salty environments. In this video, I'm going to focus on things that I like about this knife and things that I like about the carry system which Benchmade designed for this knife. Any good fixed blade knife deserves a good sheath, and in fact, a good fixed blade knife will spend most of its life in its sheath or in its carry system, which means you need a, a sheath system that's going to protect the blade so it doesn't get hurt, that's going to protect you from the blade so it doesn't cut or hurt you, and it's going to attach securely to the individual's body who's carrying or using the knife. And Benchmade has done a good job of creating a sheath system that I really, really like. Let's talk first about the knife. Uh, this is a unique knife. I like that it is relatively small. You know, dive knives can be quite big and, and unusable, actually, and hard to attach to your body or to your BC or buoyancy compensator if you're scuba diving and things. It can be hard to attach to your body. This is a big enough knife that it's usable, but it's not so big, okay, that it is ungainly or that it's going to cause additional drag or get in the way because you're really, at least for me, when I go scuba diving or snorkeling, I'm doing that uh, to be in the water, not to, to cut things. The knife is just a, a tool, okay? So I like its size and its weight. It's very, very lightweight. The knife itself weighs in at 3.2 ounces. With the sheath system, uh, it's going to weigh a little bit over 6 ounces, the whole system together. The sheath alone weighs in at 1.4 ounces. Okay, So you've got a very lightweight and relatively compact system. You've got this uh, cutter here, Okay, a little groove there for cutting uh, different monofilaments or ropes or different things like that. You have a straight edge and then you have a serrated portion as well. It's got a blunt tip so that you don't puncture things, right? If you're planning on using this in the water, particularly if you're scuba diving, you do not want to puncture your buoyancy compensator, which is like a big life jacket in essence if you're not used to scuba diving that fills with air and that you can take air out of to adjust for your buoyancy. But if you pop that, it would cause problems for you. So it's got that blunt tip. Uh, also, if you're in boats or rafts or things that you don't want to punch through, uh, the blunt tip can be beneficial for that. It also gives you a good pry bar. Okay. Uh, so the knife is lightweight. It's not a super thick blade. Okay. It's a 0 0.124 inches thick, the blade is. And so it's compact, lightweight, and I, I really value that. I got certified to scuba dive uh, 10 years ago, maybe a little more than 10 years ago. And I got certified to scuba dive in the Puget Sound in the middle of a snowstorm. So off the coast of Washington, it was snowing. There was a lot of snow on the ground, and it was cold. And the knife that I took with me on that trip was the Ontario Knife Company Mark III Navy Dive Knife. And it's a big, big knife. Relatively big. It's got a 6.5 inch blade. It's an older design. It's made out of 440A stainless steel. And uh, it did a good job. I, one of the instructors, and one of the other students were the only three people out of a group of about 30 people that actually had knives on us. And uh, it, it did good service for me. But I ended up selling that. I took it to Australia when I spent a year living in Australia. I ended up selling it to a friend of mine. And uh, then I decided that I would get a different dive knife. So I, I purchased this one, which is the SOG Seal Pup Elite. Okay, it's made out of OS 8. It has uh, gone on a number of trips with me. It spent a lot of time in salty conditions and it has rusted a little bit on me, but it's a good knife. But its sheath, at least this older version of the sheath, leaves a little bit to be desired. And I wanted something that was smaller, thinner, lighter weight. And that's why I decided that I should purchase, so that I should spend my hard-earned money on the Benchmade 112H2O. Uh, you know, I've had good, good success with other Benchmade knives. Here's my heavily used Benchmade Griptilian. I've had it for many years. I've taken it on sailing trips. I've never taken it swimming in salt water, but it's done a good job in 
environments where it would be exposed to uh, relatively salty conditions. It doesn't have the N60 steel. It's got the uh, 154 CM and it's done a great job. It's actually open. If we compare the Benchmade Griptilian and this uh, 112, you can see they're basically the same size knife. Okay. One of the things that really attracted me to this particular knife is the sheath system. So I've looked at, Benchmade had an earlier version, very close to this knife, and I think it was actually called the N680 Ultra. And it was very similar in design, but the sheath system was not nearly as good. And I'm, I'm going off my memory here, but what I, I, I remember doing is going into a store and it had a sheath system that had a button here that you push and I could just pull the knife out of the sheath. It wasn't securely attached. And the first thing I did when I went in to look at this knife in the store was see if I could just pull it out of the sheath. Because if I'm going swimming with this knife, I don't want to lose it. Okay? I wanted to have it as a tool and potentially as a weapon, depending on the conditions that I am uh, experiencing. Yeah, and that leads us to a discussion here, as I'll talk about the sheath some more here in just a second, of why we have a, a knife in the water with us. If you're scuba diving or snorkeling, there are, in my mind, two things that I worry about. One that is pretty irrational and one that is um, more likely to take place. The first and, and probably the more irrational one is I'm worried about sharks, and so I want some kind of weapon, particularly when I'm in, in tropical waters. The reality is, is uh, I've, I've scuba dived with sharks, I've swam in areas where there are sharks. you got to be careful. Uh, but that's a little irrational that I'm going to fight a shark off okay, with a knife. Probably not going to take place. But a much more likely scenario, and the reason I choose to carry a knife with me when I'm doing things like scuba diving and, and even uh, snorkeling, is monofilament. Okay, This is some fishing line. It's a 40 pound test line. I cannot break this. Okay, this will cut through my fingers and through my tissue before I'm able to break it. I guess I could try chewing through it, okay, but if I am uh, under the water, I have a relatively short amount of time that I can spend under the water, particularly if I'm snorkeling, before I run out of air and die. And in the water, monofilament fishing line is basically invisible. And that's why I, I think one of the reasons that they have this little uh, hook here is so that you can find monofilament, okay, in essence, kind of run it along, you know where it is, and that you can cut through it very easily. The Benchmade 112 came very sharp, shaving sharp from the factory. But monofilament is a thing that I, I really worry about and probably a more likely scenario than a shark attack, okay? So those are the two reasons I'm carrying a knife for potentially as a defensive tool against a uh, sea creature, but also uh, to protect me from getting tangled in fishing line or kelp or different things as I'm scuba diving, okay? Let's talk about the sheath here, but, and that leads me, okay, that discussion leads me to this point. I don't want a sheath system uh, where I take a knife and then I lose a knife and then I need it and I don't have it because the sheath system does not hold the knife securely. So the first thing I did was try to rip this thing out of the sheath, doesn't come out easily. It is fixed in there. In fact, I'm pulling as hard as I can and I cannot get it to go out, get it to come out. Benchmade achieves this level of security by this little paddle button here that you can see. You can depress it, the knife comes out, push it in, and it locks securely. There is some mechanism, okay? I could try and show you pictures, but there's a little ledge there that, that bites onto this little ledge right here on the knife, okay? So there's a component, I believe plastic, that bites into that and will not allow you to pull the knife out that holds it securely, okay? I like that. I think that that's good. That was the first thing that I was worried about. Slides in very nice, locks in securely. The second thing that I was worried about is the construction of this sheath. What was this sheath made out of? Okay, And this is a sheath that is actually not out of Kydex, but it is made out of injection molded plastic. And that's important to me because one of the things that I did not like about this sheath from uh, SOG is the fact that it's made out of a moldable Kydex. And I, I took this three years ago um, on a trip that I took to Hawaii, to Maui. And I used it when I was snorkeling. I used it when I was yeah, spending time in the water. And what happened was is that I put it in my trunk because I didn't want somebody to steal it and I wanted to go do other things. And I didn't want to leave it on my leg. I thought that was kind of weird to walk around with it on my leg. So I threw it in my trunk and it got so hot in the trunk of my car that it actually deformed this Kydex sheath 
meaning that there was no longer positive retention when you push the knife down into the sheath. You can see here it'll just fall out, okay? And that, that annoyed me <laughs> greatly. And so I was happy to see that when Benchmade constructed this knife sheath, that they made it out of injection molded plastic, uh, which means that it will not deform or that it is much less likely to deform. You see, uh, in the pictures that I've seen online and as well as other people's videos and things, they seem to only sh display one strap, okay, one leg strap, but mine came with two leg straps as it should. And my assumption is that people are just showing that there are leg straps but that actually two will come with it. You'll also see here that they have uh, what I would call lanyard holes here or lashing attachment points that you could run zip ties or something through. So if you're not using this for scuba diving or you're not attaching it to your body but to like your buoyancy compensator or you're attaching it to a life jacket or something like that for canoeing or kayaking or rafting so that you have a knife, these would give us some other additional uh, points to attach things to. If I could gripe a little bit about the sheath, I just wish that these components, okay, here, this little portion of the sheath that hold the strap, that they were twice as wide as they are. Okay, so you can see. So if I could gripe a little bit about the sheath, if I could complain just a tiny bit about it, I wish that these attachment points, where the, the little cut is there for it to go through, I wish that the portion on this side was twice as thick. That would just make me a little bit happier. I don't think it's going to break, and the reality is, is once these get attached down onto your leg, they're pulling down. It's actually not pulling on that portion, okay, of the of the sheath. But I'm worried about because this is going to be on my leg, kicking and swimming and hitting coral or rock and cracking that. Now that's not going to mean my knife's just going to float away, but it could damage the sheath, and and I think that that could be more reinforced. That would make me happier. Another thing that I worry about with this sheath is. If I take this off and I'll show you the mechanism here. This is this is plastic. This is a little plastic button there. Okay, uh, I'm I'm pulling as hard as I can, but I worry about that being plastic. But it may be a wise decision decision for that to be plastic so that it doesn't rust. Okay, and it may have been cost prohibitive to make that out of the the N680 steel that the knife's made out of. The other thing I'm worried about here is that uh, this seems to have some kind of carbon steel uh, attachment method. So there's a little metal rod that's going through there, a pin that's that's allowing you to use that toggle. And so I'm worried about that rusting. I'm also worried about sand and grime and stuff getting in there and maybe not allowing you to depress it. It's also got a spring in there. So I'm worried about that mechanism. Now I, I haven't used it significant amount yet. So I don't know, is that going to be a problem? But that's something I'm going to be paying close attention to as I go swimming and as I get some sand and dirt and stuff around in it. I'm going to keep it clean. I'm going to function check it every time before I get back into the water and different things. And I'll clean it off carefully with fresh water when I get out and when I get back to where I'm staying. But that's, those are, those are my kind of my worries about the sheath, but none of those have been realized. Okay. But I just, when I am working with different pieces of gear, those are things I'm thinking about. I think that a fixed blade knife is probably your best option for doing things like scuba diving and rafting and different uh, water adventures. But if you're swimming and you're doing some snorkeling, a, a folding knife might be a good option. I got a little Gerber rescue uh, blade here that I've taken swimming before in the ocean. It's a little bit uh, sticky there from that, but you could tuck it down inside the uh, the waistband of your bathing suit and that's also another option so maybe a, a fixed blade knife isn't what you're looking for but a folder might also do well there uh, one thing to consider too is you you may need to attach the knife whether it's a folder or a fixed blade a great fixed blade like the uh, 112 h2o from benchmade with some kind of a retractable gear keeper okay and that's the purpose i think very clearly of having this little hole here on the back with the full tank construction of the 112 is that you're going to allow to attach a, a gear keeper or retractable gear keeper so that if you use the knife and then you dropped it okay uh, that that little gear keeper would <laughs> retract it and then you'd be able to find it i worry a little bit about uh, that as you're swimming having that happen and getting cut multiple times as this kind of bounces around your gear and on your body I don't know how much of a concern that is. I haven't encountered that, but that's something that I'm, I'm careful and that I'm worried about. When it comes to the way in which the knife, okay, the 112 and the sheath interface, I played around with it quite a bit here. And uh, 
my knowledge and experience when it comes to firearms has been helpful here. Drawing from uh, leather and kydex holsters and then reholstering. And so as I paid attention to this and I realized that you've got that little ledge there that is uh, bumping into the uh, little raised portion of metal there and keeping the, the knife in the sheath, um, I realized that potentially with this rescue hook there could be a problem there. And so I started playing around with it and it is true that as you uh, draw this you can hook it there and potentially cause yourself problems. So if you're panicking and you're stuck, you're trying to get this out, you can get it tight enough there that you cannot pull this knife out. So what you do to fix that problem is just seat the knife again, draw it again, depressing it, and slide it out, pushing the blade against the, the bottom of the sheath, okay, like so. So that's a training reality, uh, something you need to be aware of, something you need to train. So in, in case of an emergency, you don't panic and die, okay, or cause yourself more problems. Uh, because it's easy to work through. I wish, I personally wish that Benchmade produced the 112 without the rescue hook. I know that this knife is the civilian version of a knife that I believe Benchmade designed uh, for some United States military units and that the hook was important to them to get people out of gear, cut seat belts and things, or um, gear and equipment that might keep you in a a vehicle that's gotten submerged in the water. So I understand that that could be important to the design, the original design, but I personally don't feel the need for the rescue hook, okay, because I, I find that it's not interfacing great for me with the sheath, but also, um, you know, you've got a nice blade here and you got the serrations. I think you can probably find a microfilm. I grab it with my hand and cut through it, okay, in the water. Uh, and I would just feel better about not having that and the way it interfaces there. It may be an irrational fear. Another thing that I did notice, and this is uh, this may be an intentional design on Benchmade's part when it comes with, again, the interface and the knife with the sheath, is that if you pull the knife and then you try and depress the button, it will not release, okay? So if, if even, even a little bit of tension stops the knife from coming out, and that's probably a good thing so that if it gets pulled or something and then it bumps that the knife cannot come out, in order to get over that, you just need to seat the knife back down into the sheath and then it comes out very easily, okay? So that's, again, that's just a training thing and probably an intentional design feature by Benchmade. So you just push, pull out, no problem. But if it gets pulled, you won't be able to, to push down that button. It I'm very excited about the Benchmade 112 H2. I think it's a great knife. I think it's a great tool to have on you when you're doing different adventures in the water, whether that's a rafting trip or a kayak adventure or scuba diving or snorkeling or whatever you might be doing, I think it's good to have a tool. I think Benchmade has created in the 112 H2O something that is lightweight and compact enough that it's usable, okay, that you'll actually have it on you, but it is a strong enough tool for prying and for cutting that, that you'll actually be able to do significant amounts of work with it if you needed to do that to, to rescue yourself or someone else. I like the Benchmade 112 H2O. If you're asking me, it would come highly recommended from me, the gear tester. If you like this video, if you found it helpful, useful, interesting, I would encourage you to subscribe to my channel for more quality video reviews on the topics of shooting, camping, and survival gear. This is the gear tester signing off.